Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, the top 10 TV shows and movies that went way too far. If there's something to be learned from the enduring popularity of shows like Rick and Morty and South Park, it's that there's a large and loyal audience for programs that push the envelope. Inevitably, it's a tempting prospect for many shows to try, but it's a tricky prospect. There's the risk of riling up censors, alienating the audience, or making the characters pretty unlikable. But pushing the envelope, you know, it wouldn't be so rare if there were not any consequences. And in the video today, we're looking at the consequences that some programs took full brunt of, sometimes for decades. Decades. Now, this is not saying that all of them are necessarily crass, violent, or racy. Indeed, as you'll see, the line can be crossed in the most unpredictable of ways. Number 10. The X-Files. Episode Home. On October the 11th, 1996, federal agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully switched from investigating astronauts that had been potentially possessed by extraterrestrial spirits and insects placing people in cocoons to taking on a case with a more realistic and thus more horrifying aspect. After the body of an infant with severe birth defects is discovered on a baseball field, the agents investigate the booby-trapped home of the Peacock family on the suspicion that there's a kidnapped woman that is being used for breeding purposes. There not only is, but her limbs have been amputated. Also, almost all the members of the Peacock family are themselves the result of inbreeding. This makes the situation of alien abduction seem like a pretty pleasant fairy tale by comparison, doesn't it? This is especially true when you consider that it was loosely inspired by a pair of true stories, one in Charlie Chaplin's autobiography and another of a 1992 familial murder. This is not to mention there being an amputated pig's head at the foot of some stairs in one scene. Although it was issued with a content warning, it still shocked audience members into complaining to the network and it got banned from reruns for three years. When it finally came back to the air in 1999, somewhat salacious ads were put out about how controversial the episode was. When the writers pitched the idea of writing a sequel to Home, they were specifically told by Fox that those characters would never be on television again. Number 9. The Boondocks, The Hunger Strike, and The Uncle Ruckus Aaron Magruder's Adult Swim series, which premiered in 2005, was both irreverent and socially conscious enough that it featured an episode where Martin Luther King Jr. himself yelled racial slurs at an audience of black people to get their attention after they'd become so obsessed with the trappings of hip-hop culture that they'd lost sight of their political situation. Of its 51 episodes, the two that were banned from the airwaves arrived in that unhappy state not because they angered general audiences, but for getting under the skin of a rival network. Of all networks, it happens to be black entertainment television. In The Hunger Strike, the show's protagonist, Huey Freeman, goes on the titular hunger strike until BET is off the air. In the Uncle Ruckus reality show, the anti-black African-American character is given a show on BET where he spouts off slurs and stereotypes. In the show, BET becomes black evil television, and the real manager of BET, Deborah Lee, was caricatured as Deborah Leevil. Naturally, this meant she was characterized as the character of Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers series. Quite silly, but enough that BET threatens legal action against the Boondocks owners, Cartoon Network, and Sony Pictures Television, and the two episodes were banned from the air. They they ultimately did see release on DVD though in 2008. Number 8. Sesame Street. Episode number 847. Now, who would have thought that this utterly wholesome public television program would ever step out of line? Well, back in 1976, one episode managed it. It was none other than Margaret Hamilton, schoolteacher, 70s TV coffee saleswoman, and Wicked Witch of the West herself, pre-Wicked. It's not that Hamilton as the Wicked Witch did anything particularly edgy, even by the standards of a 70s kids show villain. She spends much of the episode trying to recover her broom after flying over Sesame Street. About the meanest thing she does is threaten to turn Big Bird into a feather duster. Yet parents sent numerous complaints to the network and continued complaining when test screenings for children were held at the studio. The main piece of information derived from the children themselves was that her green painted face was particularly captivating. Nonetheless, the network pulled the episode from circuit. It must have been flattering for Margaret Hamilton to know that 30 years after starring in the role for The Wizard of Oz, she still had it. Number 7. Dexter's Laboratory. Episode Rude Removal. 
While some episodes of children's television crossed the line honestly, others seemed to be asking for it. This segment from the second season of the Cartoon Network series is definitely one of the latter, particularly for something in 1997. The episode can't wait to get to the content meant to provoke the censors, so it does that before the story even starts. Dee Dee, the sister of the child protagonist on the show, is extending her middle finger at the viewer in the title card. Or at least it would be a middle finger if she had five fingers instead of the standard cartoony 4. The premise of the episode is that Dexter has developed a machine that removes rudeness from people, which he intends to use to stop Dee Dee from pestering him. Through a comical mishap, both of them end up in the machine, but the machine has the unforeseen effect of creating clones. While the original Dexter and Dee Dee speak in overly polite tones, the clones are using profanity from their first sentence and pretty much never stop. The fact that all the swearing was censored didn't seem to help since context clues made it pretty clear what was being said, and the segment wasn't officially released to the public until Adult Swim edit in 2013. Number 6. Monty Python's Wee Wee Sketch the landmark sketch comedy program Monty Python's Flying Circus, which premiered in 1969, was famous for the BBC allowing it to push envelopes and mess around with the format. But in 1972, it was felt it crossed a bit of a line when there was a sketch mocking wine connoisseurs. Michael Palin played a character who would take a drink at a restaurant, wax pretentious about the quality of the beverage, try to guess to the waiter what time of wine he'd drunk, only to be informed by the waiter that he'd just drunk urine. It's understandable that one of the network's executives, the Pythons, remembered it as being Bill Cotton, would make the call to cut it. What was a bit more surprising was that one of the comedians, John Cleese, came down hard against what he felt was a sketch whose comic potential didn't overcome its tackiness. He even claims that he was fine to be considered a fuddy-duddy for insisting it be cut too. It probably wasn't a coincidence that he left the show before the next and final season was shot. Number 5. The Simpsons, episode Looking for Mr. Goodbart over its nearly three decades on the air, The Simpsons has angered many countries or cities that had episodes devoted to them. For example, in the wake of the 2011 Fukushima meltdown, several episodes that featured meltdowns comically were banned in European countries. A comedic song about how bad New Orleans is in the episode A Streetcar Named Marge led to a lot of angry letters from the city until Fox apologized. Still, it's very unlikely any of the writers anticipated the reaction in Russia to an episode that aired in April of 2017. During the episode, Homer Simpson becomes addicted to Pokemon Go, or Pokemon Get as it's called in the show. True to his oafish form, in one brief scene, he goes so far as playing a game in a church. As it happened in September of 2016, a vlogger in Russia had done the same thing in the country. Unlike Homer, this blogger was arrested and faced 42 months in prison. When it was aired on the Russian network 2x2, it was seen by a number of Russian Orthodox clerics who complained, most notably among these Archpriest Andrei Nokolov. After being labeled Hollywood propaganda, the unintentionally topical episode was banned from Russian television. 2x2 Two Two simply didn't want to risk losing its license, which it had previously lost in 2008. Number 4. Maya the Bee Episode King Willy this 2012 3D CG cartoon from the Belgian animation company Studio 100 is not the sort of kids' show that anyone would watch expecting any kind of salacious content. So you can imagine Netflix's shock when, in September of 2017, a woman named Shay Robinson posted a screen cap of the show which featured a crude drawing of male genitals in the background of the 35th episode. This was quite crass considering the title of the episode was King Willy. The episode was immediately pulled as quietly as it could be, with neither Netflix nor Studio 100 releasing any sort of comment until, eventually, it befell the producer to apologize. Frankly, considering how obvious it was in the uncensored episode, it was kind of surprising that no censors noticed it before the episode was listed on Netflix. Number 3. Ren and Stimpy, Episode Man's Best Friend on the other hand, this Nickelodeon cartoon that ran from 1991 to 1996 is exactly the sort of edgy kids' show where everyone was expecting the creators to cross the line sooner or later, and probably repeatedly. The episode Man's Best Friend was pinpointed as the episode that led to creator John Crick Falusi being removed from the show. Featuring a new character named George Licker, who was created to shake up the show, the episode included an unusually violent scene where Stimpy beats Licker literally literally bloody in a style that was supposedly evocative of the more graphic boxing scenes in the 1980 film Raging Bull. There was actually another episode with George Licker that was shelved for offensiveness at the time, but that particular scene was the straw that broke the cartoon's back. Number 2. Family Guy Episode Partial Terms of Endearment 
In 2009, the revived animated phenomenon Family Guy had a script submitted by Danny Smith which centered around the female lead Lois Griffin considering getting an abortion. Even with all the rape humor and graphic violence that had been permitted up to that point, for years the only public exhibition of the story was when Seth MacFarlane had a script reading for the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Considering that MacFarlane admitted that the show would probably never make it to air, Smith went much further than even the standard episode, although he said that there was nothing unusual in the writer's room. Fox produced the episode anyway, and when they refused to air it, entertainment president Kevin Riley said that it was merely for business reasons instead of any moral objection. This claim seems to have been borne out by the episode being released as a standalone on DVD a year later. Number 1. Crybaby Lane in 2000, Nickelodeon aired their first made-for-TV horror movie. The bizarre story centered around a tale that a farmer had conjoined twins, one good and one evil. Years after the twins die and are buried separately, some children attempt to reanimate the good twin but bring back the evil twin and by some means endow him with the ability to possess people. The story was shelved by Nickelodeon for 10 years for being too scary, being deemed too much even for a home video release. A notable scene that no doubt contributed to this decision involved the underage main character character running around in his underwear for more than five minutes. The movie's shelved status inevitably led to rumors that it contained content far too disturbing for audiences in general, instead of merely being too extreme for a channel aimed at children. There's even actually a popular piece of fan fiction for the movie that claims that the director included rape scenes and unsimulated violence in the film. These ludicrous claims were finally put to rest when the movie was finally run in 2011 and released to home video. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, check out some videos from the archive over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.